now. That's right. Good morning. Please, I have a couple of questions for you. Could you first introduce yourself? Sure. I'm David Curtis. Uh, I'm the Green Party candidate um, for Secretary of State last cycle, and I've just filed in the presidential race uh, for next cycle, 2020. So, it'll, so my campaign committee will be David Curtis, 2020. Great. When did you become a Green, David? I have a similar story as yours. Um, in 2000, uh, I learned that Ralph Nader was running for president, and uh, I just really respect Ralph Nader, and I was I was immediately on board. And at that point, I didn't honestly even know what the Green Party was, uh, so I, I changed my registration to Green, um, and I supported Ralph Nader, and so that's how I found them. Great. We have been talking earlier about some of the challenge and difficulties getting a second party uh, campaign registered for the presidential elections. Can you give us a history, a little bit of background about ballot access, and then share some of the challenges you've been facing? Oh, sure. Well, the Green Party uh, really is a, is a European construct, and most of them operate uh, within parliamentary governments. And so that type of governmental structure allows small parties to grow. Um, the United States doesn't have a parliament. They're kind of a winner-take-all capitalist society. So they've historically had only one or two major parties. And they don't really allow, the structure organically doesn't allow for a third party to grow. Um, plus, uh, the United States is sort of ignorant in general of the dilemma of a third party attempting to grow. Um, so, so there's a lot of uh, system blocks to us, um, and right now the Greens are on the ballot in about half, a little less than half of the United States, okay. and we're actively trying to get ballot access in all of the states. There are three states where the rules are so difficult that the only way a third party can get on the ballot, just so you can vote for their candidates, or even consider voting for them, is through a lawsuit. So, th so there's three states where we will again have to have lawsuits to get on the ballot. Wow. Can you um, just share some of the challenges in even a public space so you can just, because I've done ballot access before and we just walked around, but we talked a little bit about some of the situations you faced even having space to talk to public, the public. Yes. Uh, well, the United States doesn't really have much of a commons left, a uh, public space where people gather and can talk about things in their community. Um, you know, they still have the churches. Um, they have parking lots at grocery stores, but those are really private, private box spaces. Um, the DMV will let us uh, get signatures if we give them 24 hours notice and we fill out some forms and things, even though it's our constitutional right to petition. Um, so, so the problem is a lot of private entities have gobbled up what used to be uh, the commons, you know, uh, the, the common area. Um, there's states in Nevada where most of the land is, is managed by the Bureau of Land Management, BLM. If you look at Nevada, I think the statistic is something like 65% of the state is BLM land. So that's technically the commons. But in Nevada, if you go to BLL, BLM land, you'll be in the middle of the desert, and you'll be the only person there. <laughs> um, so you know, where do you go to find this commons where you can show somebody a piece of paper and say, hey, we're trying to get the Green Party on the ballot, and we need 6,000 signatures in this state. You know, do you want to sign? You just have to be a registered voter. Doesn't mean you're going to vote green. It's just so that we can be on the ballot. Wow. And so just getting people to understand that simple concept and finding them. Um, I just went through the process with the Greens and also Bernie supporters uh, in Nevada trying to get the Green Party back on the ballot. We've been off of the ballot for six years in Nevada. Um, we sued Nevada to get the time frame extended uh, and that's what allowed us to just do the signature gathering process. The other dynamic is so few people are voting. You know, the perception is, you know, if the process is corrupt, why should I participate? And so the, the largest growing voter segment that's still left is nonpartisan. People, people who are still bothering to register, mostly younger people, um, they're not picking a party at all because they're disgusted with political parties. 
and they don't want to be associated with it. Um, but the unfortunate thing is fewer and fewer people are actually voting. So the people that are elected are being picked by a super minority. Mm -hmm. um, so we, don't, we literally don't have democracy. Um, Jimmy Carter said this recently. We, we don't have a functioning democracy. Um, and it's been that case for a while. Um, so you know, those are some of the issues we're struggling with. Um, the other thing is just name recognition. Um, still, if I bring up the Green Party in the Commons or Jill Stein or one of her other candidates, nobody knows what I'm talking about. I've had police officers not understand what the words Green Party mean. Wow. Um, when I went to a Bill Clinton um, event, he was uh, having a rally for Harry Reid in Nevada, and I was pulled out of the lineup. Uh, I was sitting there reading a book. I was pulled out and questioned by undercover cop, Secret Service, and Metropolitan Police Department. The Secret Service man didn't know what the words Green Party meant. When, when I told him I was the governor candidate for the Green Party, he said, what's the Green Party? Wow. And then, and then I you know, gave him a little bit of history of the Green Party, and then he said, well, where do they lie in the political spectrum? And I sort of fudged a little. I said, well, they're in the middle. They're between the two major parties, which most people would characterize us as left, right? But I personally am really moderate. So I, I personally am right in the middle um, as a green. Mm -hmm. uh, so I told him that line, you know, we're, we're in the middle. And then he, he you know, he, he said he would allow me to go back to this event, mm -hmm. but there were a lot of cops around. So, so he's basically cautioning me. Right. To, and, I was an invited guest of Harry Reid. Wow. I was on the list. So, so the, that's some of the stuff that Green Party members go through. Um, we, we have had Green's rush stages, so I'm guessing that's where he was coming from. But which is it? Does he not know what the Greens are, or is he protecting the world from the Greens? You know? <laughs> which version of the Secret Service is he that day? So. Well, David, we, uh, we've been talking for about eight minutes. I would like you to make some kind of a closing statement. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, this election cycle, it's, it's very important that we get the Green Party candidates in the debates, in the televised debates. That's a make or break it moment. Uh, there's currently a lawsuit with uh, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson from last cycle. They're suing to get access for our Green Party candidates in televised debates. Once we have a Green Party or a Libertarian candidate on the televised debate, that's, that's going to decide the election. We will pull significant numbers, and that's what they are blocking. Um, the CPD is blocking us, the Commission on Presidential Debates. They set an artificial threshold that they just made up from outer space of 15% polling. So the only way you can poll as a candidate in 15% is if you're Donald Trump, or if you're a multimillionaire, or you happen to own a media syndicate. Um, so that's the problem. And I personally have complained to the IRS twice in writing now, asking them to punish the CPD by removing their nonprofit status or asking them to change the threshold to a reasonable number, you know, 5%, 2%, something that's actually attainable by humans on the planet. Uh, that, that's the problem right now. So I've issued it, I've done all I can as a, as a citizen. Uh, Stein and Johnson have an active lawsuit. Hopefully it will get resolved quickly so it can affect the current uh, campaign. Um, but part of the reason I filed for the next election cycle is if I have to, I can become a, uh, a person with standing in that legal action against the CPD. CPD was created by the heads of the two major parties specifically to prevent a third person from the debates. Thank you so much, David. Keep the good work up. It's so nice to meet you today. All right.